until when Barry Dickinson, my director of marketing, asked me if this would be possible, and I said, well, how wonderful to have all that combined intelligence in the room and, you know, to be able to share some ideas about how we market our schools. Because marketing of our schools is one of the critical things that we, that we must do, particularly, obviously, with independent schools. And it's an interesting journey, isn't it? Because when you think back to, uh, well, certainly when I started out in teaching, you know, if you said marketing, you know, well, you don't need to market. Everybody goes to school. What do you have to market schools? Why? And, of course, things change and have changed dramatically over the decades uh, until we come to this point where marketing is absolutely critical of the survival of your school. But it is, um, it is essential that the story is good. And you are storytellers. Every single one of you sitting in this room is a storyteller. You tell the story of your school. And it's important that the story is genuine, it's accurate, and it truly reflects what is happening in the school. Because the people who come through the gate might have read the glossy spin, but if they come through the gate and they see that the glossy spin doesn't actually match the reality of what they're seeing and hearing, then your marketing is going to be completely unsuccessful. And also you will, in fact, do, uh, to the detriment of your school, establish yourself as spin doctors and, uh, and that your school is representing itself falsely. So it is really important that when you tell the story, the story is, is genuine and, uh, and ref is reflected in the actuality of the school. And I've always tried to ensure that that is the case with the two independent schools that, that I've headed, Seymour College in Adelaide and now the Knox School here in Melbourne. Now as part of all that, perhaps showing the real side of the school and being genuine, Barry came to me and said, you know, everybody's doing blocks, you have to do blocks. I do blocks, really. <laughs> and he said, no, you have to do a blog. And I, I said, all right, well, I'll do a blog, but I'm not going to do a blog that goes blah, 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 I saw all the little children being trees and mushrooms and wasn't it wonderful and uh, isn't it great that we've uh, got iPads and I said because we're already telling them that. We're telling them that in all sorts of ways, in all sorts of different ways through the great work that the marketing department does. So I said if I'm going to do a blog I want it to be a little bit different and I decided to be a bit brave and I thought well maybe, and I don't know if this is true or not, well Barry keeps telling me people are reading it, uh, maybe if I perhaps try and, and weave a story about the life of a principal and how, how the decisions that you make are affected by your own experiences, your own background, uh, the things that, that you have done and seen. And that maybe if I shared a little bit of the life of a principal, in other words, we are human and trying to show the human face of the principal, maybe people would be interested. And so that was the point from which I began. And as I go through each week and think, what shall I write about? I try to connect it with who I am as a person and why I think that way. Uh, you know, my, obviously my background, my upbringing, I grew up in New Zealand, New Zealand. I don't like mazes. Uh, and I, um, <laughs> I, I came to Australia when I was 20 years old and, and I never went back on a permanent basis. So I lived a very different life and my education in the primary years was totally different to anything I think any of you might have experienced. I grew up in a, a very isolated country school, country schools actually, my parents were teachers and we moved around, in New Zealand. And until I was 10, I was the only white child in the schools that I attended, so a completely Maori population. So very, very different. And then when I was 12, I went to boarding school in Auckland, I went to Epsom Girls Grammar and I was educated there for my secondary years. So very huge transition from country New Zealand to city uh, elite girls school. And, uh, and even in that transition there was a lot of change and learning on that journey that I think has coloured my perception of how young people are today, what they need, my uh, ability to be empathetic towards our international students, knowing the challenge of leaving your home base and having to come into a different environment. So through the blog, I had hoped that in some way I could show people what it is to be a principal, the tensions, the struggles, the personal catastrophes that occur that, that shape the way that you are 
and yet you still have to be um, the perceived person, the swan. Remember the swan who's going along on the top one underneath paddling like fury? Uh, and that's so often how it is for a principal because your public persona identifies and defines your school. So how you are as a principal, people will look at the school and they'll say, oh yes, the Knox School, or Suzanne McChesney, or oh, she's a nice lady, or I don't like her very much, you know, whatever. It, it really has an impact on, on your school. So your public persona has to be fantastic all the time. You can't have a bad hair day. And, and so these things are important, but they're actually not what makes you the person. And you, the person, is the same as every single one of you sitting here. You know, you have partners, you have children, you have pets, you have parents, and, and you have all the normal tensions and things that happen in your lives that impact on how you are today when you come in here and sit down. And, and the principle is absolutely no different. So that's all I was trying to do with my blog. That's all I'm trying to do is actually share some of that personal experience and how it the decisions that I might make, the directions that I might want to take at school, and, uh, and my relationships with all who are within our community. And I hope it works, I hope it's of interest to people. And I keep asking Barry and he says, no, they're reading it, they're reading it. And there's someone in Alaska who's reading it. And I said, well, they must really be bored. <laughs>